question for you and just looking at this, I mean, I, I think it's a very fascinating technology in terms of enabling uh, us to do Tavra more. Uh, and I was just looking at some of the data. I, I'm not familiar with uh, Shockwave or have any personal use with it, uh, not yet. We've been looking for cases, uh, but I'm curious because when I look at some of the tables you, you, you show, uh, the reference balloons that you use tend to be around seven uh, or more in the, in the data, the small data set with its limitations. But it seems to me that it's more about facilitating in vessels that are big enough, but may just have calcification in the way rather than taking a smaller vessel and enlarging it. Is that a fair statement or fair way of looking at it? That is correct, Paul. Um, it is not a procedure that's going to make our small arteries bigger. Uh, it potentially would give you the ability to, to pass through the arteries that are large enough but otherwise have some limitation with the amount of calcification or plaque. And, and I think it is a promising technology. We have very few, uh, little experience as well. We're just developing it. Um, but I, I fear that if it's used uh, without the appropriate guidance or without the appropriate uh, thoughtful process, we'll encounter the same problems that we did originally with uh, the Sapien system or the original uh, Corval system where we try to do everyone transfemorally and had horrendous results, uh, which tended to have a very high mortality rate. So I think it's a powerful tool in the right uh, patient uh, selection. I mean, once, you, once you have done the lithotripsy, what is your next step in terms of assessing whether it's now safe to put in the e sheath or whatever sheath you're going to be put in? Do you do any further testing or do you just simply try to pass the sheath? We simply try to pass the dilator with the sheath. Uh, and as long as there is no resistance or limited resistance, then we just keep on going and take the pictures towards the end. Is that what your experience is, Molly, as well? Yeah, so we've done a few. I mean, I can't say that we've done a whole lot, but we've done a few. And so what we try to do is um, prior to the procedure, you know, in our TAVR conference, we um, say ahead of time, okay, we're going to try shockwave on this one. And if we don't, then we will do X uh, alternative access, usually like carotid or something like that. And so that we have them prepped for it. But it's like Alan said, you basically do shockwave and then you try to get the sheath up. And if it goes, then yay. If it doesn't, then we move to the uh, alternative access. But if you do it that way, then you don't uh, get um, a, a vascular complication, you know, if you say beforehand that you're going to do it. And Molly and Alan, is it serial dilatations with the sheath or you just go straight in with the 14 or 16? Uh, we mostly place a dilator first, and as long as the dilator goes well, then we follow that with the sheath. Um, I think that has, once again, it's a very small experience, but that's worked us with us well. Same. Great. It's been, I mean, the experience has been very positive. I mean, we, again, we've only done about a half dozen cases, but it, we, it's facilitated getting the sheath up. The question in terms of cost that you raised, Alan, is do you try a regular balloon first, or do you go straight to a lithotripsy? At this point, we've said, there's enough data and our peripheral the guys have said shockwave in terms of controlled expansion, lack of dissection is so much better. And the reason I mentioned this is a lot of people say, well, the cost issue, you should just try a balloon. But if you have calcified vessels, I think in this type of scenario, I would, because once you then dissect the artery, you, you change sort of the whole dynamic of the case. So I, I would sort of just, to, because that question often comes up, why not try first? I, I would favor going straight with shockwave balloon in these type of cases. And I'm curious what your guys' approach is, whether you do a serial regular balloon or you go straight to shockwave. I agree with you. If you're gonna, I mean, we sort of decide we're gonna use it and then we use it. We don't, you know, try something else yeah. first. We come it up front. I think yeah. one of the more complicated things that we've encountered, uh, and I'd like to hear what you think, Molly, as well, is once you take your completion angiogram, if it doesn't look perfect, do you stent it or do you just let it be? Yeah, we um, tend to let it be. Unless I it looks really valid. Good yeah. like I mean, if you've got good flow, then yes, we let it be. I, I, I agree. Like if, the gradient, if the gradients are low and you right. have good flow, you just, it's going to heal. Right. Yeah. I mean, these vessels never look that good. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but it's difficult, you know, as interventionalists that, you know, we see things that are not perfect and, you know, you do have to hold back and, and that's totally fine, right? You just have to make sure that you hold back appropriately. Well, yesterday in our complications course, I heard the phrase perfect as the enemy of good at least six times. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we have to keep telling ourselves that though, because even though we said, I mean, we still, you know, try to. <laughs> so I think, Sushil, you remember that case where there was a focal abdominal aortic calcification. I mean, that was the most impressive shockwave thing I've ever seen in my yeah. life. That was just incredible, actually. Yeah, so, the focal ring in the abdominal aorta for whatever reason and uh, couldn't pass catheters and two catheters passed in. So yeah, but it, it, uh, it's a nice technology. So that's a great question. I mean, how, how high do you take the, the balloon, the shockwave balloon up? I mean, you, you go all, all the way up to the thoracic aorta? I mean, if you needed to, I mean, how, how far do you go up with the balloon? It's a matter of diameter, I think. No? Yeah. Yeah. It's more of just, just getting to the big enough vessel. And it, yeah. it, but if you needed to go to the inferino abdominal aorta, you could. If there's a small enough area, and that was the case that Vinny was talking to, we had, an, we had a patient with a, you know, that was like, you know, five or six centimeter abdominal aorta, heavily circumflexed, calcified ring. Um, and so we, we balloon that, that one area within, uh, with an eight balloon. Uh, it was a remarkable result. I can tell you, we had tried everything before that. So I think uh, the technology definitely works. Uh, so do you think there's a chance that this is going to be available in bigger balloons and sizes for something else? Or is like, I think the largest size is eight millimeter, right? That, well, Dr. Sishabor on the, on the chat here is just mentioning that uh, you could use two shockwave balloons for the aorta. Um, so yeah, it's purple and red, so it's sort of, a, you know, that, that, that's uh, interesting. I've, ne I've never done that and I guess uh, he, putting two balloons in the aorta is a technique uh, that could be used. Yeah. You so, know, uh, I always believe that someone, uh, I think it was uh, Mike Max said a long time ago that give an interventionist a catheter and a balloon and they will do everything. And I think. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's how we live. It's all how it all started. <laughs> Well, on that note, we're at the top of the hour. It's been a great discussion, and uh, I just really have enjoyed seeing you all. Uh, looks like we had uh, a lot of attendees online uh, during the dis uh, during this um, presentation, and I, I thought it was very fruitful. And I, I always learn something from you all. So, thanks so much for all of you being here as part of CVI. I can't wait to see you all again in person. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, Paul. It was a wonderful, wonderful yeah. session. Thank yeah. you.